guys and welcome back to the channel. It is Katie here with Life Mundane and I am really excited to come to you guys because if you're watching this video, you probably have something in common with me. You probably absolutely love books and have more books than you know what to do with. But if you also are watching this video, you probably have many of the common book lover problems, which I have found to be not knowing what we actually own, um, not being able to find what we own when we need it, being able to actually get to cycling through and reading many of the books that we have and how to organize them. And it's always a challenge to know how to organize this in a way that works for us. So today I wanna to share with you guys some really practical tips on how you can do that. So let's get started. Hi, my name is Katie and welcome to Life in the Mundane. I am a second generation homeschool mom of six beautiful kiddos and on this channel we talk all things resources. I love to share with you resources that are going to help you in your homeschooling and help encourage you in your biblical parenting and how you can utilize those to their fullest potential so that you can make the most of the little moments. Just a word of warning before we start our video, this system, the different tools that I have utilized are all things that you guys can utilize with whatever God has given you in this moment. It does not have to look exactly like my system whatsoever. And I feel like there are many practical tips in here that you can use regardless of how many books you have or how much space you have. That being said, just understand this took years of kind of figuring out what works best for our family. And there are different seasons where different things have worked better. I will link a few videos down below where I have showed some of the organizational things we've used for books in different seasons and maybe that'll work better for you but I still think there'll be things in this video that can be helpful so with all that said let's jump into the tips the first place I do want to start with is library books we do love to utilize our local library and if that is something you have available to you I think it is a great thing we have three places that we store our library books the first place is if there is something that the older kids the older four children who are reading checked out for themselves specifically to read they do have a drawer in our school cart system where they can place those books. This has been a great way to teach them responsibility as they now have their own library cards. Um, but there are many other books that I just check out or the younger ones will check out and they're not ready to keep track of those books themselves. So for those books, we store those in a book basket in our living room. And that way I don't have to go searching all the bedrooms, all the places to find them when they come due. The third and final place that we store library books is my husband got me this amazing side table off Amazon. I will link it down below. It was fairly affordable and um, he got this for me because it has a book sling in the bottom. This is where we are going to be putting the books that we are utilizing for our current unit studies. So we do unit studies on history and on different geography locations and so we'll have different things that we're studying just for that week. So until that point that we need them, they'll go in the big book basket um, under that that side table but when we are ready to utilize them for the week they will go in that book sling and that way it's easily accessible to us I don't forget to read them um, the kids will even bring them to me sometimes during uh, different quiet times or whatever and we'll read through those books but that's just a really easy way to see what I'm actually working on this week to have those things that I maybe have put on hold for a month in advance in the book basket and of course the kids individual reads in their school drawer so what about read alouds or assigned reading books well for those books we actually store those in our school closet. We have a bin that I just got from Walmart during the back to school season, but I believe you can get them most years round or you can get them online. And we just got one for read alouds and one for assigned readers in our school closet. These are the ones that I picked out for this specific year, not any one that we might wanna read at any point. And it has been so helpful to have those there. I know as soon as we finish one read aloud, I can go to the book basket, I can scroll through to see what I wanna use next. Now what about the books that we wanna read aloud or assigned readers, but we don't need them for this year yet? Well, that's where this bookshelf comes in handy. We have a whole section here of different books that we wanna use as homeschool read alouds for our kids. I have labeled them with a blue sticker for the ones that I've cataloged, which I'll get to that whole thing in just a second. And then for those that we have read, like the one and only Ivan, you'll notice that when you open the inside cover, I have written what year we wrote it. Sometimes I'll write the month and the year, sometimes I'll just write the year. But this is to help me be able to remember what read alouds I've done in what years, because we do have kind of two sets of kids, so to speak. We have our older kids that are going into middle school, we have our preschoolers, and I know there are some books I've read aloud the preschoolers have heard, but they're going to want to rehear it when they're old enough to absorb more of it. So this helps me keep track of which books we've actually read, how long it's been since I've read the book to decide if I want to reread it. Also a big tip, if you have a read aloud that you read to your kids and you don't like, 
don't bother keeping it. Just go ahead and pass it on to somebody else, donate it to Goodwill, those kinds of things. I only keep the read alouds that we actually really loved. And then I'll write the number in there so I know I can reread it. On this bookshelf, which is a set of two of the nine cubby cube organizers, on this set is all the books that we have for our kids that are available for them to read at any point. I have a few of them divided by series, like this is all of our boxcar children books. I have a few divided by early readers, like level one, level two readers in here. We have some of our Usborne early readers, all of our Dr. Seuss books. And for those books that are too big to fit on the shelf, we just put them sideways like this and slide them in there. And then I have also our early chapter books. These have different color coding stickers to them. And the way we do this is we use an app called Library Thing. This I have done an entire video on. You guys can check it out. And so with that, I started scanning in books into Library Thing. It's a free app that you can utilize and it helps you keep track of your entire homeschool library. You can search things, um, search titles or topics or things like that. But one of the problems that I ran into with this app is that we would get new books all the time or maybe there would be a book that wasn't on the shelf when I initially did it and I couldn't keep track of which books I had scanned and which books I hadn't. So I started a color coding sticker system. I got sheets of stickers like this from Amazon. I will link them down below for you guys that had various different colors. I would then choose the categories that I wanted to do and I would stick a sticker on the binding. So green is for those early readers is what that is, the dark green. Pink is for my early chapter books and so on and so forth. But the idea here is instead of feeling like you have to scan in every book in your entire library all at once, I would just not put a sticker on it until I had scanned it. So I can quickly see in my library what still needs to be scanned. I just do a few a week. I still have a lot on my bookshelf that are not scanned in. I've been using this system for quite a while now. On these top shelves is all organized by category. The bottom shelf is purely just picture books that my kids can have access to whenever they want. It's on the lower shelf where my little ones can access it and they're not organized in any particular order. Um, um, this is just more kind of a free-for-all and most of these don't have sticker labels yet. That's something that I will do down the road. For my seasonal books, I actually put these on a set of floating shelves at the bottom of our stairs. And the way that I do this, I've kind of tweaked it a little bit from a previous video that you guys have seen, but I just got these quick stair light Tupperware containers. You can use the really small ones or you can use a little bit larger ones. And then this is where I will sort out ones that are by season. So in those buckets, I have one for spring, summer, fall, winter, different kinds of books that are included within these seasonal boxes are obviously ones that have to do with weather seasons. So right now I have all of my winter books up here. Um, I'll have spring books, I'll have fall books, things like that. But then I'll also have ones that go around different holidays that will fall within that. So I have my, all my Valentine's books or all my Christmas books. I change these out once a month currently because I'm kind of in that place where I can do that. Originally I just did it once a season. So I would just do it once a quarter um, or whenever I really got to it. But having these books in these boxes, having them being able to store in my laundry room and I can just pull it out and rotate through them helps us to actually get through reading some of these really fun classic books that I wanna read with my kids, but doing it in a way that's not overwhelming. If you wanna see more about a few of my favorite winter books, I will drop a video up in the iCards and down in the description below that you guys can see. But it makes it easy for my kids and there's lots of studies that show that the books that they can see the covers of, they're more likely to pick up and want to read. Another thing that we recently got is one of the giant cube organizers on the Black Friday sales. Um, we got one from Walmart. Again, I'll link it down below. But this is our reference library. So for each of these, they have been categorized, they have been labeled and scanned into library things. But basically, these are the books that a lot of times we're going to need to utilize for our homeschooling. And so I want really easy access. Now you'll notice this is the only bookshelf in my entire house that has gaps. And that was on purpose because I'm constantly adding to this through my different thrift book or book outlet purchases. And so so I'm constantly wanting to fill in the gaps and holes here and so I intentionally made sure there was extra room for our library to grow. Some of the categories we have here is this whole section is just Bible themed books and so this is one of my favorites from New Grass Press, God Made All of Me. They all have a purple sticker if it is Bible related. Music books are down here on this bottom cubby. They all have yellow stickers to signify that they are either music themed or that they are art themed. Down here we have different art books that our kids can look at. These could be books that are about specific artists, which like is like this one, or it could be ones where they're looking at pictures and pieces of art like the Come Look With Me books, 
or it could even be instructional art books like drawing books. I have a section for books that make math more fun. Again, I've done a video on this. If you want to see some of the tools that we utilize to make math more fun, you can definitely check that out in the iCards or down in the description below. We have the Who Was series. We have books that are going to help you with your writing or your dictionary skills, any kind of language arts like that. These books are all having to do with government, economics, and down here I've got books on emotions, manners, feelings, things like that. Our kids do have some books in their bedrooms that are special to them ones they've gotten for Christmas or that they've purchased themselves or series like American Girl Doll series that they really like to read um, that are in their own rooms that they are responsible for. Beyond that we do have a few other additional bookshelves in our house to house more of our adult books but this is mostly what we use for our children's library system and again you can apply those same principles to the um, older books as well. I would say some of the best tips that you can utilize to help you with organizing your home library. You're going to figure out where your books are coming from and designate specific spots in your home where you are actually going to utilize those books. If all of my books were closed off in a bedroom or were behind closed doors, we'd be less likely to utilize them. So putting them in places that are prominent in our home, having them in different spots in our home prompts us to want to read more often. The other thing you can do is again finding some kind of library scanning system to keep track of the books that you have. And for us that has been library thing, but I know there are many different ones. If you have used a different one, please drop it down links below because people love to try new things. Um, and then also just making sure rough categories for your books so that you can know, okay, this bookshelf is all reference material. This one is more just pleasurable reading. This one is more seasonal. Those kinds of things can be really helpful. A few questions that I know are gonna come up that are gonna be asked about our tagging system for our books is probably what categories. And I'll be honest, I will link down below or I'll, I'll put a list down below of as many of the categories as I can think of for you. Um, but just know you can make it your own. The uh, pack of stickers that I got from Amazon offers a lot of different color choice options um, and I do try to tag our seasonal books um, so silver is all of our winter themed books there's like a brown that's all of our fall themed books so on and so forth and um, that does kind of help me know if I find a book that I'm like huh I wonder where that's supposed to go and it'll remind me oh that needs to go in the winter box because it didn't get put away right away so um, that does help me if you find a book that falls in a couple different categories. You can decide how you wanna do this. What we did is we just double stickered it. So this is a Bible-based book, Tell God How You Feel, but it is also about feelings, emotions, those kind of things, which is my green, my lime green sticker. So I just put both stickers on there. Don't make it overly complicated or you won't ever be able to keep up with it. And I will tell you after doing the sticker system for a while, I have found that there are a few types of books that the stickers sometimes have trouble sticking to. These books over here, zero problems that I've had so far but some of the other ones with maybe a slightly glossier cover or that have more of the beveled edges can be harder to get those stickers to stick on or to stay stuck on so with those if you just want to put a little piece of scotch tape over the top of it that can be really helpful you can also utilize different kinds of labels or sticker systems this is just what works for us I do suggest having a master list of your stickers and what the different labels mean but I totally lost mine I'll be honest. So I'm able to visually be able to see what my different categories are for the most part and which stickers go with it. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, but if you can try to put that somewhere in a safe space so you don't lose it. I hope this has been helpful. If you guys want to see more about library thing that we use to catalog our books, you can check that video out here and please subscribe and share if you've enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.